Now to this point, I've turned three ball bearing tops and they work really well. I think this allows these tops to spin very nicely. Here's one that I made and you can see the ball bearing in the mirror. Here's another one. This is the first one I turned and they all turn really well. It's kind of a cool idea and uh, so have a go at turning your own top with a ball bearing in it. The ball bearings are really inexpensive and the one I'm using here is a quarter inch. So stay tuned and I'll show you what I did. You know, I believe when we look at a top, we're looking at an engineering marvel. And if we change some of the dimensions on that top, we get a different outcome, whether it spins really well or not. And what I've done is I put a ball bearing in the very tip of that. That may not be my invention, but I think it offers some possibilities. Before I get into today's topic, I'm going to mention a couple things. I've had several people ask me about this little turntable and I got that off Amazon and I'll put a uh, maybe a link or some reference up where you can find this. It cost about $15, takes three batteries and they last forever, but it's really cool if you have a display or something. The other thing I'm going to mention is Fundamentals. That is the AW online magazine. And this month, in September, I was honored to have some of my pictures in that online magazine. So, I'm not sure if you're aware of that. I really uh, didn't look much at that until the last few months. You have the paper copy of the American Woodturner, that if you're a member of the AEW, you get that. But also, you have access to fundamentals. And it's different information than you get in the magazine. So I highly recommend looking at that and uh, I'll put a link up to that as well. So let's get on with today's project. Now here's one of my little tops that I was turning and I was experimenting with a really narrow handle that you spin it with. What I do usually is I just round over the tip of that just a little bit and that seems to allow that top to spin a little bit better. And I was thinking, well, gee, maybe I ought to do something in those lines. So I put a ball bearing right in the tip of that. I believe that wood is bubinga. And if nothing else, it really looks kind of cool. So let me go ahead and form a tenon on this. And I'll reverse that in my pin jaws. Now the pin jaws in my tenon here that I'm using are straight back, they're parallel, so I don't really need to make a dovetail. I'm just taking a small parting tool and cutting that and I'll reverse that in just a second and turn my top. I have a piece of lignum vitae chucked up into my pin jaws and I'm going to take my spindle rough and gouge and true that up. Now I'll take my little bowl gouge and start working on the point. Now I'm just making a push cut, creating a chamfer, which is really just a straight line that's going to lead down to the eventual point of my top. In that area, I'll put my ball bearing in. Now the first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of sanding on the very tip of this. And to keep the dust down, I'm going to just use a little bit of wax. All right, there is the business end of the top completed. I'm going to make the recess for my ball bearing. And I'm going to just use 
an old chisel, just an old woodworking chisel. I've got a bunch of these ground to different profiles. Now this little tool was initially designed to cut small coves and that's ideal for this project. Now in this clip I'm just doing a little bit more fine tuning with my small tool. I'm getting ready to try my ball bearing and see how well it fits in there. What I'm trying to accomplish is a little bit of a friction fit. Well, off camera I glued in my ball bearing. Nothing extremely mysterious about that or difficult. Just a little bit of CA glue and I glued it in and now I'm wiping off the excess glue from around my ball bearing. Because the ball bearing is going to take a little bit of abuse as it's spun. Tops are really designed to be worn out. That's my approach to making a top. They're pretty to begin with, but eventually they get a little bit bunged up and that's all right. Right now I'm laying out the length of my top where my handle or the spinning part is going to be and that area right there will just be a little bit of a round over so I'll work on that to begin with and I need to work on the end of the top near the ball bearing and leave as much mass in the other end as possible so it doesn't vibrate. This lignum is really awesome wood. You can see the glare I'm getting off that from my tool. That's probably more of a burnish than uh, any indication I'm cutting it really nicely, but uh, it does cut nice and leaves a great finish. It's got kind of a brownish green color to it. And here I'm just forming a little bit of a bead or half a bead on that area. I'm taking a parting tool and I'm going to just eat a little bit of that wood away this goes a little bit faster and also it is easier to control especially in this area right here. If I get a run back on that other part there to your left that's going to be a problem and I won't like that. Now I've got the top completed from the very tip where the ball bearing is down to that valley where the handle is going to start. There was a little bit of a catch there but I'm just hogging out some wood that's going to be in the area of the handle. And I'll start detailing that area where the handle meets the main part of the top, but I need to lower my tool rest. So I'm really creating a little bit of a valley in there or a V-cut. I've got a detail spindle gouge that I'll use right now. Turn that over and work on the other side of that. And I'm going to reduce that down quite a bit. It's still too large in diameter at this point. So I'm going back to my spindle gouge and I'm just taking a little bit more off that handle. I've got quite a bit, but it's important to start where I'm at right now and maintain a little bit of that mass to the right of what we're watching here. And again, that'll prevent any kind of vibration. So I'm going to go back to my... Nope, there's a different tool. That's a beading and parting tool. So I'm going to just hog out a little bit more material. And really, this tool is a little bit similar, and it's often compared to a skew chisel only it's a lot taller than it is wide. I've got my handle completed. I've done a little bit of sanding and finishing on that and I'm ready to part this off. So I've got a skew chisel. I'm just taking some V cuts in that and reducing the, the size of that area so I get a very very fine point. I like to create a good point here because I can then turn that top upside down and spin it. Well, and here is a shot of my finished top with the ball bearing. Well, there it is. Let's see if that thing spins. Well, even if that doesn't spin, 
it's really pretty. Look at that. I like that a lot. Well, let's check her out. Well, there we have it, the end of another successful project. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Please share my videos. And the rest of this video you can watch on your own or click out of it. But it's just going to be spinning for a while. Thanks. Bye.